Welcome. Welcome once again to Robert Nauer in the Villages and Beyond. A uh, follower, viewer of mine, recently asked me if I would do a talk or video, I'm doing a talk, on golf carts in the villages. He said, I don't know really what to buy. I'm so confused. There are so many different brands and types out there now, lithium versus gas, etc. brands. What should I do? What do you think, since you have experience with 18 years in the villages? And of that, about 12 was using a golf cart when we first got here in 2007. Purchased a golf cart, which was actually 2007. We were given $30,000 in incentives to use any way we wanted, whether it was furniture or golf carts. We bought both furniture and golf cart with that incentive money. And at the time, the villages pretty much controlled all the golf carts in the villages, all three counties. There were one or two other companies, but they were rather small at the time. And since then, the villages has bought out most of the other distributors in the area. And that's how you eliminate competition. And when you don't have competition, your prices of products go up. And that's exactly what has happened in the villages, especially in the last six years. Price of golf carts has dramatically increased. It dramatically increased during the pandemic, and, and now it's even higher. And golf cart prices are not coming down. So I'm going to make a couple recommendations about what, unless you are truly going to golf, or unless you live very close to one of the main squares, Spanish Springs, Sumter Landing, Brownwood, or the new area that they're building down in Middleton, such, unless you live right next to one of those squares, I wouldn't waste my money on a golf cart because of the time and energy and effort it's going to take going on the golf cart paths, multimodal paths, or the roads. As well as when you're on the roads, you're subjecting yourself to grave harm and danger by being on the road. One, because you're not paying attention in a golf cart, as you should be in a car, and you're swerving over the white lines. So if you don't need to play golf, or you are not going to live within a one-mile radius of one of the squares, you really don't need a golf cart. Although, the sad part is the villages, not only in what they are currently building in Middleton and in the new area, but in the Sumter Landing uh, and Brownwood, they do not have sufficient parking, not only for cars, but they don't have sufficient parking for golf carts. What they should have done, what the Morse family of builders should have done, is they should have built high-rise parking, centralized parking for all villagers in a high-rise golf cart parking lot. You could have had many, many, many more golf carts go into the parking lot than you could have cars, and it would have been cheaper and easier to build. But they didn't do that. So there is not sufficient parking anywhere in the villages for all of the throngs of golf carts and cars that want to go to the squares. Now, back to golf carts. The first cart we had was a Yamaha, and it was wonderful. And then I, later on, about five, six years later, bought a brand new, another golf cart. So the golf cart we first got cost us $11,900, brand new in 2007. In 2010, I bought my second golf cart, and we bought it from um, Yamaha of Ocala, which on three, uh, 441, 441.27, going north towards Ocala, they tend to have much more competitive good prices than the Villages does. So I would always check out Yamaha of Ocala long before I would ever check out purchasing a golf cart from the Villages, which has a huge markup. That's number one for starters if you want to save money. And yes, Yamaha of Ocala will deliver your golf cart to you wherever you live in the Villages. Number two, the Yamaha golf cart brand, Gasoline, has really one of the very best engines, best foundational setups with the struts and wheels and and brakes. But you really do have to follow the guidelines for the brakes as far as weight and number of passengers. Because if you try to put more than you should, more weight or more people on a golf cart, you make it very dangerous and tipsy. And people have been killed in the villages, consequently, as a result of not adhering to golf cart weight and, and number of person standards that it requires. So if you're going to carry extra passengers, you really need a four-seater or a six-seater golf cart. Do not put four people 
in a two-person golf cart. I've seen it happen all the time, and it is extremely dangerous and stupid. So always follow the white weight guidelines. Now, the ga- gasoline, the only drawback is that you will have to keep gasoline in a five-gallon can at your home in order to top it off and then go fill up the gas can, and the gas is very expensive. But the trade-off is if you buy one of the newer lithium carts have the lithium-ion batteries, there's a couple problems. Number one, the battery when they do require a replacement are exorbitantly expensive. They usually require anywhere from four to six batteries, uh, and each battery is about $480, so they're very, very expensive. Now, you can also get golf carts with gel batteries, AGM gel batteries, that do not require filling and uh, water, and and I would highly recommend those if you're going to get an electric golf cart. But the one thing that I would not do on any cart if it's electric is I would not store it in your garage unless you disconnect the batteries. And there's a reason for that. Look at all the photos all over YouTube and the internet of golf carts burning up and houses burning down because the batteries were defective or they got overcharged. Never, ever, 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 ever charge your battery in your golf cart inside your garage. Never, ever, ever do that because greater chance of burning your house down and the golf cart catching fire because older people tend to forget that they're charging their golf cart. While I've been here off and on for 18 years, I have seen four houses burn down personally seen them, have gone and seen them when they were burning to the ground because somebody left a charging golf cart, whether it was a club cart or one of the new lithium ion battery carts in their garage while they were charging it and the batteries caught fire. And as you know, lithium batteries, they cannot be put out with water. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really extremely dangerous. So I would never, ever, ever charge a lithium battery in my garage. Always do it outside until it gets fully charged. It's just just what a common sense would tell you. Now, the AGMs are a little bit different. You can charge those with little risk, but they have also been known to catch fire, too. Um, and never drive an electric golf cart through standing water. That's just stupid. You can drive a gasoline golf cart through standing water, but never, ever, ever drive an electric golf cart, especially a lithium golf cart, through standing water water, you are looking at big problems and lots of issues. The person asked me about brands, and the only brands that I, the only brand I would ever use is a, is a Yamaha golf cart. Yamaha does sell an electric cart also. But the other issue with driving gasoline golf carts, there's a lot of Chinese made golf carts roaming the villages these days. They're being sold at Home Depot and Lowe's and they're they're basically shitty little carts. They are not quality cart, but they're charging almost as much as they charge for a Yamaha. So what does a Yamaha cost? Well, it depends on how much shit you get put on it. I think the starting price today is around 15 to 16 thousand I've seen on average nineteen thousand dollars. I can almost go buy a brand new uh, Toyota Corolla right now for nineteen thousand dollars used that's only one years old. And like I said, if you're not gonna be golfing and you're not gonna be living very close to one of the squares, then you really don't need to have a golf cart. Buy a car, a small car, buy a smart car, buy something that's sm- small and efficient that you can put in your garage and still get around the area. So brands, there's just so many different brands, but 95% of all of the non-Yamaha golf carts are made in China. And let me tell you, my friends, you do not want to piss your money down the drain or waste your money on a Chinese-made golf cart. The bearings wear out faster. The engines wear out faster. The quality control on the engines and the pistons and everything else wear out faster. Everything wears out because they are simply not quality cart. Fact. You can dispute it all you want, but China does not make quality products. And that's one of the reasons why we should never, ever allow Chinese cars to be imported into the United States. One, lack of quality control. And if they're electric, they will burn up. We're just a bad idea. And so the same thing applies with golf carts. Don't buy a goddamn Chinese golf cart. Now, 
Now, if you're if you're that, you know, so well, the Chinese golf cart's three thousand dollars cheaper than the American cart or the Japanese cart. Then go ahead, piss your fucking money down the drain if that's what you want to do. But I wouldn't do it. I'd buy a Yamaha. And me personally, I'd buy it from Yamaha of Ocala, not Yamaha in the villages. Uh, the villages. The thing about the villages is everybody comes here and they want the convenience of going down to the local village Yamaha golf cart store. I can't even say Yamaha anymore because they sell like four or five different brands. But every brand they sell in the villages other than Yamaha is made in China. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why would you buy a shitty product that's going to break down on you or catch your house on fire? Why would you do that? So instead... Buy a Yamaha. Yeah, you have the issue with the gasoline. Usually you're better off putting um, 90 octane non ethanol in your cart, which is what I, because it'll allow the two stroke and four stroke cycle engines to last longer, to burn the gas better. If you buy cheap gas, it's going to off gas, it's going to create a lot of fumes and it's bad for the environment. So that's the other issue with gasoline golf carts. Now, Yamahas aren't too bad, but the, the Chinese made gasoline golf carts, they pollute like you wouldn't believe. So if you if you don't give a shit about the environment, hey, you do what you want to do. But I'm just telling you, Yamaha is a better quality product. It doesn't pollute as much. They do pollute. They all pollute because they're gasoline. But so do lithiums. When lithiums have to be uh, discarded and they go into the dumps and everything, uh, they're very hard to break down. Lithium is a very deadly, toxic material. And ultimately, you are promoting the destruction of the planet by buying a lithium uh, product. So the lithium golf carts cost a lot more than the Yamaha gasoline golf carts do. And of course, there's many different options you can get on golf carts, depending upon what you like to do. If you just want to carry your dog around and groceries, you can get a rack for the back to carry a lot of groceries in. You can put a little uh, dumpster-like truck on the back of it. There's all kinds of things you can do with golf carts, but you always have to consider weight. And in the Navy, we, and it being a cargo officer, you have to consider weight and moment. And that means height and width and distance and weight as to how top heavy or topsy it's going to be. So my personal opinion is go spend, if you really, really want to golf and you want to live close to one of the squares, which is very get, becoming very hard to do in the villages. Most of the places they're building now are far, far away from anything. A uh, golf cart's not going to be your answer unless you like to golf. And also you can rent a golf cart when you go to play golf too, if you wish. Why not just have a small car to drive around the villages? Problem there is you're putting more cars on the road and the villages already is extremely congested and becoming more congested day by day. Traffic is just this week alone. All the snowbirds are starting to come back and and oh my God, I, it was such a difference from two weeks ago. I've never seen the traffic as bad as it is right now. So those are the trade-offs. Do you want to be in traffic, stuck, or do you want to do you want to have the chance of getting hit by a car? by having your golf cart, and a lot of people do get hit by cars, as well as a lot of stupid drivers in golf carts get hit by cars because they don't pay attention to the DMV rule, and they turn in front of cars without signaling, and they don't get in the proper lane. They just turn right in front of a car. About eight weeks ago, I almost broadsided a dumbass who turned in his golf cart with his grandchildren, turned right in front of me without signaling, turned right in front of a goddamn car going 35 miles an hour, and, uh, and then he wanted to say it was our fault. Oh my God, how stupid can you be? So personally, my wife and I got rid of our golf carts. Um, and and now at over 70, I've given up golf. All I do is boat and fish and I have no need for a golf cart. So why the fuck would I want a golf cart? I don't need a golf cart. So I got rid of it. If you don't need a golf cart, don't do the monkey see, monkey do bullshit. Monkey see, monkey do. Yeah, my neighbor's got a golf cart. I need a golf cart. You don't need a golf cart if you don't golf or don't live near one of the squares. Just get a little car. That's all you need. Also, Just remember this, too, if you're thinking about buying a golf cart. If you drive on one of the roads with a golf cart in the golf cart lane, the minute you veer over that solid white line, you have now become a golf cart requirement to be perfectly street legal. If a cop sees you veer over the white line, that is a $1,200 ticket for being in a golf cart that is not 
properly street legal. You must always stay within the white line of the golf cart lane. To veer out is illegal unless, and unless you put your arm out or your signal on and you are turning. And if you're going to do that, you always have the responsibility to check behind you to see if there's any cars coming, because if they, if you turn in front of them and you get hit, it is your fault, not the car's fault. Cars have the right of way in the villages. Remember that. When you are crossing, cars have the right-of-way. Golf carts do not have the right-of-way. And if you're an automobile driver and you stop for a golf cart, you're a dumb fuck because there is no requirement and all you're doing is creating the potential for causing an accident or a death. Cars have the right-of-way in the villages. So, with that, I hope that helped a little bit. And with that, Bob out.